So it is Tuesday, January 12th, and it's time for Red Dead Online's weekly update. Now, Rockstar did not add any new content this week, but they have added some uh, pretty good bonuses and discounts all pertaining to your bounty hunter role that are pretty interesting. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the discounts. I mean, you can get on their newswire, read through that. There's plenty of other guys that will break that all down for you, but I'm just going to get to the point and show you the things that I think are going to be the best things to focus on this week. So with that said, the discounts, uh, basically you're getting a five gold bar off on your bounty hunter license and your prestigious bounty hunter license. So if you haven't started those, it's going to be a good week to do that. Also, if you have the Prime Gaming uh, link to your Rockstar account, you actually get the bounty hunter license for free. I doesn't mention the prestigious, so I don't know about that. The next thing to note is the double roll XP payout on legendary bounties. So if you're uh, trying to level up your character, focus on the legendary bounties this week, you're going to get double roll XP payouts on that. The next thing is your double dollar payouts on your prestigious bounty hunter rolls. So these are going to be your the last three legendary bounties that Rockstar added. So that's going to be your Gene Finley, your Carmela Montez, and your Virgil Edwards uh, legendary bounties that they have recently been added. You're going to get double dollar payouts on that. Now I've uh, heard people mention that the Carmela Montez, that it's bugged or it's not paying out correctly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the issue is. I mean, if, if you know, please drop me a comment. Uh, I ran that mission today. It seemed to be paying out for me. I'm on PlayStation, so I don't know if that matters. But anyways, you might have avoid that one um, just so you don't get that glitched out, you know, waste your time. Uh, but the thing that, I, that, I, that I'm that i going to focus on, especially in this video, is the 50% increase uh, on dollars paid out on the original Legendary Bounties. So that's going to be your, the first 10 Legendary Bounties uh, that Rockstar released with the original Bounty Hunter role. So anyways, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the bounty I'm going to be talking about is my favorite bounty, and that's Mr. Philip Collier. Now, I've run this guy about a thousand times since he's came out. One of my favorite ways to passively generate income and XP while I'm getting other things done, such as daily challenges, uh, collecting. Because what you want to do in these missions is spend about 30 minutes maximizing your payouts. So you can actually spend about 20 to 25 minutes doing other work and then go in and either kill or capture Phil and t bring him to justice for your payout on the mission. So I'm going to go over the, you know, my tips with this mission. And the first thing is, is when you spawn in, you're tripping balls and Phil's running at you, charging you constantly. Don't use a gun. Pull your lasso out. And what you can do is you can either aim and throw your lasso. Now, if you use this option, he will always spawn in the same spot when he blows up. However, doesn't really matter. You can actually just tackle him with a lasso, and he's never going to be able to kill you with that vicious one-shot machete that he's got. So as you can see here, boom, tackled him. He's gone, but he will spawn in a different area. So obviously, I've cut out about seven uh, more spawns of fill and I'm just pulling up on the map the area that I try to go to and basically I just try to avoid the swamp area where Phil's camped out at just so I don't aggro his enemies his little henchmen and they uh, you know they can sneak up on you catch you off guard but anyways so first thing I do and you know you got about 20 25 minutes that you can kind of bebop do whatever you want but the first thing you can do is you can just hunt I mean you gotten this far in the game you know exactly where I'm at in the Blue Water Lemoyne area, so you got a lot of good hunting hunting here, and you can actually just straight hunt. I mean, you could just you know uh, kill animals, skin them, butcher them, whatever, and you can actually go to the butcher and sell items there. So I uh, threw this in here so you can see that I'm still in the mission. You can see at the bottom, I'm still telling me to search for uh, old Philip. Uh, but anyways, you're able to access the butcher, sell whatever you want. Uh, another thing to mention, you can actually, you, I mean, you can spend longer than 30 minutes in the mission if you want to. 30 minutes is just your max payout. So if you really get some good hunting going and, you know, you really wanted to, you know, make that, make that money, I mean, don't, don't feel like you gotta, you gotta be out in exactly 30 minutes. But as you can see, you can, uh, obviously access the butcher, sell whatever you want. So the next thing you can do is you can do a little panther farming. Uh, as you can see, our little veteran panther farmer, Annie, is, uh, it's keyed in on a, uh, a uh, this is just a regular panther. This isn't the Florida panther. But anyways, I 
I'm in the uh, southern region of the map, close to Old Phil, and I'm going to pull up my map here in just a bit. But, um, anyways, I mean, you're going to have, uh, I mean, obviously you want to try to focus on the three-star Panthers. Uh, this one's just a little one-star, but, anyways, pulling up the map, you can see I'm, like, southeast of the Braithwaite Manor area. Um, you can see my red uh, marker, I think my horse is down there, kind of obscuring it. But that's the point on the path that I uh, that I exit my horse and kind of make my way up into the woods. But I'll show you, you know, exactly what I'm doing there in just a second. So anyways, you can, um, you know, call in your hunting wagon and, you know, you can store the, you know, store the panthers on there. They make uh, good donations to Crips uh, for your trader role. I mean, you could, um, you know, throw them on your horse, take them to the butcher sell them if you wanted to but uh, usually I'll work the panther farm and just you know throw them on my hunting wagon now you you could sell them to the butcher on your hunting wagon later you know I just I donate them to Crips <clears throat> is what I do so anyways uh, calling them a hunting wagon of course you can throw it on here dismiss the wagon and it'll be saved for you and then just call your horse back So I wanted to skip to the point. I'm going to show you where I ride to. Now anyways, um, I would probably allow about four minutes for this spawn. I mean, like, this time I'm riding actually too fast, so when I come back, the panther's not going to be there. But um, I'm just showing you kind of typically the area that I ride to. I just follow the trail back down until I get to this, um, I think there's a little bridge up here up ahead. Um you'll see like a sort of a divide in the land and you could probably ride further um, but this is just like the area that I go to uh, there's a, typically a lot of gators that spawn in this area but if I get clear all these guys out here so you can see it's right here um, and there's like a little bridge up ahead but anyways I typically, once I once I kill the panther, I'll run back to this area, and then I'll make my way back to the spawn area. So let me skip to um, the actual point where I get off my horse. So as you can see right here, you don't want to go to that tree up ahead. Uh, but anyways, actually I think I got my marker a little further up. Anyways, you want to get off your horse about this area and start making your way up through here. Um, I just don't hunt by horse uh, because it's, there's a lot of trees and stuff too. I don't want the horse to get spooked and because you want you want to be able to get that clean headshot. But anyways, I just come up through the forest and just my, make my way uh, east is the sort of the direction that I'm headed. But anyways, I just wanted to show you, like this time, I actually, uh, I actually came back a little too quick. So anyways, I just wanted to show you this. If you come through there and you don't hear anything, so just run back to the path, hop on your horse, and then just ride back to that initial starting point. So I'm just going to skip ahead to the, to the next part. So as you can see, I went back to the starting point and made my way back up to the uh, point where I dismount. Of course, not going quite to that tree and then just heading north through here. Now this little area up ahead of me, sometimes a panther can spawn here. In this video, he was spawning more to the right. But anyways, just keep your eye out for him. Uh, recommended is you do use a headset, dial your audio up. Um, the uh, panther can't is not as loud as the cougar, so it can aggro on you. And you just you want to make sure you get that headshot so you maximize its quality. Uh, but anyways, uh, this video of the panther I ended up getting I think four. Um, they were all in this area over here. But uh, anyways, just make sure you get those headshots. And um, if you work this method, I mean, it is kind of hard to master. But within 30 minutes, I mean, you can get three to four depending on you know how efficient you get with this method. So anyways. 
The Panther Farm is one thing that you can do in this Philip Carlier, and I'm going to move on to the next. So the next thing I like to do whenever running this mission, and especially when I'm hunting, is I, I stock up my small carcasses because you can uh, you can always just keep those in your pocket. So there's a lot of frogs obviously running around this area. There's also some rats that you can find, um, and I'll show you that in just a second. And then just keep your eyes peeled to the sky because there's a lot of bats uh, that you can collect. I mean, as you can see, there's a little frog hopping there, which I don't kill. Uh, but anyways, you can stock up the bats. These small carcasses come in handy whenever you're completing uh, daily challenges. Uh, you'll have like certain small carcass animals that you have to break down, or uh, if you're donating like carcasses to crypts within a time frame, um, have, using the small carcass animals comes in very handy. Now this little cabin area right here, uh, there's a lot of rats that hang out here, so I didn't actually see any here. But anyways, the next thing that you can do besides hunting is you can actually do collectibles. And it's going to be pretty much any collectible uh, above ground. So right here I'm getting a tarot card. Um, you, so like your coins or anything that you have to dig up or use a metal detector is not going to be available within this bounty hunter mission. But like your wildflowers. And see this one is a good mission to use uh, to find your blood flowers. So the blood flower being a nighttime flower, if you run the Philip Carlier mission, it's always nighttime. So you can always knock out your blood flowers instead of having to time it, you know, the end game time between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. to collect your, your blood flowers. Uh, you could also ride across the map and get the Argaritas if you wanted to. Uh, but anyways, if you're doing the blood flowers, I would just stay out of that area, you know, in the center because you will have enemies coming after you. Um, but anyways... The next thing I'm collecting is the uh, liquor bottles. Uh, so again, you can collect these. I actually don't test out eggs. I'm pro I, I, I don't think I've ever collected an egg, uh, but I would I would imagine that they are available. And the other methods you could do is if you just absolutely want to be just completely lazy, is just make your way to the edge of the map, anywhere where there's like some water available and pull out your catalog and you can actually just sit here for you know 20 25 minutes and then go in and capture you know either kill phil or capture him and bring him into justice but just like i said make sure that you uh park your horse kind of on the water's edge because uh if you do get close to that swamp that center area where phil is camped out at an enemy can aggro on you or i have uh if you're like near a wooded area like a panther can find you and kill you you know if you're just kind of walked away from your controller and you don't want that to happen obviously because then you have to restart your timer to maximize your payout so i've kind of broken down all the activities that you can do while waiting for your time to spool up so the next thing you need to do is decide whether to bring in Phil alive or dead. Now, bringing him alive can be tricky. The biggest thing is you have a lot of enemies that can hit really hard. The biggest thing are these gators right here. You're going to see, like, you got to be on the lookout. They get a hold of you, and it resets your timer, which, you know, now you've got to spool your time back up to maximize your payout. So the one thing you can do is you can actually just bring him in dead. And uh, this will guarantee that you don't waste your time that you've been spending, you know, kind of spooling up the uh, payout on the mission. Easiest thing to do is just rope fill and just drag him out of the area. Now, the one thing that I would recommend whether, you know, you're deciding to bring him in dead or alive is I would, uh, I would hit a health tonic just to get you a gold ring. There's, uh, especially when you're five-star bounty level, um, the guys on horseback with the the arrows or there are some that are on foot those arrows hit really hard now there are guys that'll rush you like berserker style with machetes um i mean they can kill you pretty good they'll pull you off your horse you saw the gators the gators i mean there's just nothing you can do they're going to kill you if they get a hold of you so anyways the easiest thing you can do is like what i'm doing right here and i just lassoed phil and i'm bringing him all the way back into sand the knee and then i'll just kind of skip forward and um, I'm going to show you the actual payout. So this is uh, this, you know, current week's uh, bonuses. Um, 
Anyways, it'll spawn back in. And there we go. So uh, $140 uh, would be your, your max dollar. That's this week. Um, that's if he's dead. Of course, you get your standard half bar of gold um, and 750 XP. Uh, you're always going to get a half a bar of gold whether he's dead or alive. To see them breathing. And so right here I've brought Phil in alive. All that's left is your payment. And of course this is this week's payout. So $280. And I had some daily challenges bonuses. But anyways it was a half a bar of gold. Um, I had some. I had the daily challenge bonus that you know, made it increased it. And then the XP would be 1500 So anyways, there you have it. A uh, lot longer video than I typically make, but I've run this mission hundreds of times and I just wanted to kind of get showcase, you know, all the different types of things that you can do while in mission, while you're spooling up that time. is a great way to make passive income, XP, you know, gold, while you're getting other things done. Um, I know I kind of skimmed over the process of bringing in Phil alive. If you have any questions about that, I'll be sure to uh, get back with you and share some techniques. Um, if you're new to this mission, and especially if you're solo, I would probably just recommend bringing him in dead, just so you're not wasting your time. You know, because once you die, I mean, you're you're gonna, especially when it's five star, and you only you you, you only get the one. You die, you have to restart. Uh, it resets your timer. So I would just bring him in dead, um, and then you can get some of your other stuff done. But anyways, uh, hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, drop me a comment. I'll get back with you. Uh, but anyways, until next time.